you have got the right. Why? Why arrest? We are no, no, no. And there, and there, this one, we are not denying. You have the, all the right to do your arrest. Why you arrest? You went through that person's room and stuff. Whoa. It, 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 it's not right. Yeah. Oh. The two military men who were on board sustained various degrees of injury and are currently receiving treatment at the Dr. Asana Hospital in Boko. Sources at the hospital say immediate medical attention have been given to the victims, but they may be transferred outside the region if the need arises. Yeah. Yeah. It has come to the attention of the members of parliament from Boko Central, Zebila, Binduri, Pusiga, Timpani, and Garu, who include Honorables Mahma Ayaraga, Cletus Avonka, Abanga Abdullahi, Haji Aladi Ayi Ayamba, Lydia Lamisa Kanvareva, and Honorable Albert Akuko Alazuga, that the Nayiri, Na Bohugu Mahmi Abdullah Sheriga II has purported to enskin a rival chief for Boku. This is unacceptable and should not come from a person of his stature. Such purported enskinment is null and void and will not be recognized by any institution under the 1992 Constitution. The government of Ghana must take every step to ensure the maintenance of peace and security and hold perpetrators of this criminal act accountable. Meanwhile, the members of parliament for the area call on the people of the Kusauk traditional area and its environs to remain calm and assure them that this unlawful conduct will not stand. We are watching closely the level of political will of the government of President Nana Akufo Addo and Vice President Alaji Mahmoudou Bamouya in respecting the constitution of Ghana and the right of the Kusasi people to rule over their own land and to have their independence. The Zugrana, Naba Asigri Aburago Azoka II, who is the Bokunaba and president of the Kusa Traditional Council, remains the only recognized paramount chief of the Kusa Traditional Area as recognized by law. The conduct of the Nairi has the potential to aggravate the already precarious security situation in Boku, and this must be resisted. Ladies and gentlemen, let me add by saying that the current Bokunaba, the Zugurana Abgurawka Azoka II, who is also the president of the Traditional Council, was in skin in 1984, as far back as 1984. He has been registered at the Traditional Council, the Upper East Regional House of Chiefs. The, the perpetrators of the crime are believed to have set fire to the timber market in Boko during the curfew hours of Tuesday, raising several wood shops in the process. Spokesperson for the wood shop owners in Boko is Abugri Haruna. He narrated to Metro TV how one man was found dead and another injured. This morning we woke up and met a situation that we can all describe where an, an individual was shot dead and a whole timber market bent into ashes. And not only that, a watchman 
in that area, the man in charge of the area at night also had his leg shot by unknown assailants. And that, has, that, that is actually very, very painful. Jato is an individual who works, at he's also a carpenter, and he works there, he buys his items from there, and he stays around that area. So uh, once he's not dead, we cannot tell exactly what sent him there. He bemoaned how such an act happened right at the doorsteps of the Boko police station. We are wondering whether actually that particular curfew is properly enforced by security or not. We reported the incident to their family. They also came and visited because the scene where this thing happened is less than 100 meters away from the municipal police station. That is where the whole thing happened. They came and visited the scene. They took pictures of the burn wood. They took pictures of the cops, the murdered individual. And they visited the, 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 the man with a broken leg at the hospital. And of course, they said they would investigate. It's, it's, it's not a usual jargon in, in, in Boku. They would investigate. But we are hoping that they should be able to arrest the perpetrators. Renewed clashes erupted within the already volatile Boko municipality in which Mampusis and Kusasis are at each other's throats over a protracted chieftaincy issue some believe is non-existent. Residents are calling on well-meaning Ghanaians and the government to help bring a lasting solution to the Boko situation. This is a mess. It's a complete mess. You understand? First of all, the High Court decision yesterday to rescind its earlier order for the arrest of the chief. What does it mean today? What does it mean? A chief has been installed. It is deemed to be illegal. It is supposed or it is anticipated that that will lead to a breach of public peace and so on. The High Court orders that those responsible for the illegal installation be arrested. The High Court rescinds its decision. Where are we? Total confusion. You understand? What is it that went into the High Court deciding to rescind its decision? I don't know. But then there's a huge mess with Nisbik, you know, dealt with. Then you have the statement which is signed by Kodu Opon Nkrumah, Member of Parliament and Minister, on the 15th of February. And the relevant portion of the statement is paragraph 2. It says, Government further reiterates that Naba Asigri Abu Grago Azoka II is the Boku Naba, duly gazetted and a member of the National and Upper East Regional House of Chiefs. So this is the justification for the government's decision uh, that the installation of a new Boku Naba is illegal. So if this is to be applied, I mean, to, to, to the Ghan state, then it would mean that any installation of any chief after the gazetting of Ni Lache, uh, should be illegal. Because he had been also been duly gazetted. He was a member of the National House of Chiefs and a member of the Greater Accra Regional House of Chiefs. That's all. <laughs> I mean, that's all they're saying. That this is the basis for recognizing chiefs. And if why didn't you take the same position? Why was the same position not taken in respect of Nilache? You understand? And, and it's, it's so clear. I mean, there's nothing else to say. A certain level of consistency is required in, in the formulation of public policy and the implementation of public policy. When it comes to chieftaincy, it is obvious that there's no consistency. There's no consistency, there's no principled application of the law, and so on. And I'm very worried about that. My view, eh? my view, hmm. this is a serious matter, you know. My view is that we should not be. <laughs> yeah. No, my view is that all of the things that are happening around chieftaincy and so on yeah, are indicative of the fact that this institution is, is anachronistic, 
and, and uh, therefore we ought to take steps uh, to restore sanity and order. Look at the number of people who are dying out of chieftaincy disputes as well. I mean, totally unwarranted. So many people are dying, property being destroyed and bent and so on in the name of chieftaincy. What is chieftaincy? How do people become chiefs? People become chiefs only because their great great grandparents and so on were warlords. They attacked other people, captured them as slaves, and seized their property. That's all. Show me how chiefs came about. If it's not true, and we encourage this, and today, in a small country like Ghana with 31 million people, everybody is a king. Now, they don't even like the title chief. They are all kings. Everybody is a king. And all this death and mayhem is just so that a few people can sit in palanquins and dance on the heads of others. That's all. Claim lands, huh? claim lands and fight to balance and kill people and so on. The state must act. Even if they were kingdoms, uh, how can there be a kingdom in a democratic republic? There cannot be any kingdom in a democratic republic. Huh? Is it possible to have a kingdom within a democratic republic? A unitary democratic republic. Is it possible to have a kingdom? And we have encouraged all of this many times of political convenience and it's festering violence and so on. We are, we are looking on. I'm sick. All right. So uh, that was Tracy Pratt, who was also uh, sharing his opinion, I think, yesterday on, yeah, yesterday on Good Morning Ghana. So what are these statements he's talking about? You know, when the recent um, enskinment was done in Boko and allegedly was done by the map proceeds, um, government gave uh, an order, issued an order, and it was from the Ministry of Information. It says a statement. The government condemns development in the Nalarigu today, February 15, uh, 2023, concerning a purported enskinment, <coughs> enskinment uh, of new Boko Naba as illegal and uh, a threat to national security. Now, the government further reiterated that Naba Asigri Abugrego Azoka II is the Boko Naba duly gazetted and a member of the National and Upper East Regional House of Chiefs. Now, the security agencies have therefore been directed to arrest uh, and prosecute any other person who holds himself out, out as a Boko Naba. Further, any development that have a potential to undermine the peace of Boko will also be dealt with swiftly and uh, in accordance with the law. <clears throat> and it was signed by uh, the Minister for Information, Kujopo Nkoma. Now, days after, there was another issuance from the court. It says that in the Superior Court of Adjudicature, in the High Court of Justice Bogotanga, held on the 21st of February 2023, uh, before His Lordship Alexander Graham, Justice of the High Court. Uh, in the matter of variation by Lieutenant Colonel uh, Ajibadek, or Ajibadek, Benjamin Baba retired, motion ex parte for variation of warrant for the arrest of Na Al Haji Seydu Abagri, that the Kuga II, Na Bahagu, Mahami Abdullahi, uh, Shariga, and Kingmakers under the inherent jurisdiction of the High Court. Upon reading the affidavit of Lieutenant Colonel Ajibadek, Benjamin Baba retired for variation of an order for warrant of the arrest and upon hearing mrs joyce deborah principal state attorney it is hereby ordered that the warrant of arrest issued for the arrest of na buhagu mahami abdullahi shariga paramount chief of the mamprugu traditional area and his kin makers are hereby rescinded under the inherent jurisdiction of the High Court, giving under my hand and the seal of the High Court of Justice this 21st day of February 2023. And it was also uh, sealed by the courts. And that's what you heard 
um, the uh, Kwesi Prats Jr. Uh, sharing his opinion on Good Morning Ghana earlier yesterday. Now, today there was a development, and I think we can have the pictures on the screen. Early hours of today, there was another development where, remember that after this um, warrant for arrest was withdrawn, um, the people are on the lookout, I would say, the people are on the lookout, and they suspect that they saw some persons in town with policemen. Now, these people, they are, they are, I, I have spoken with some people from the area, and they say they were dressed up looking like something, I don't know, with dreadlocks, with earrings and tattoos, and they blew the alarm that they suspect that they have come to assassin the newly installed chief. So they tried attacking these persons. Of course, when you're in a community and there's a, someone new in the community, you'll be able to <laughs> identify that this person is not in our community. So they actually, uh, the, the, the youth in the area attempted attacking these people who have now been saved by the police and are now in the custody of the police. So you can see in the pictures, uh, you know, the youth on the streets at the police station. And uh, these are some of the developments that we have. But we have a lot or a number of very rich. We have a number of very rich, uh, you know, guests with me uh, to deal with the matter today. And um, they are also same persons. I actually engaged some some last year, yeah, during the Boko discussion on Good Evening Ghana, and they are joining me again today. So. I have Adep Sani, who is a foreign policy and security analyst. Uh, he's joining me via Zoom. I'm sure he's there. Is Adep with me? Okay. So Adep will join pretty shortly. But Adam Bona is also a security analyst. He is with me already uh, via Zoom. Now, uh, Dr. Issa Moro is a lecturer and a Mount Prusi opinion leader. He's also joining us from the UK. He is... Uh, joined us already. He's on via Zoom. But the one with me in the studio, he was not with me in the studio, so I forced him into the studio. <laughs> I mean, I'm confessing. And that is lawyer, Kletas Avoka. He's also a member of parliament for Zebela constituency and also a Kusasi uh, opinion leader. And he has joined us. Honorable member, thank you so much for thank you, uh, heeding to my call you. and, and you're welcome. Now, um, Let's start from here. So I also have a Boko Affairs, and, and that I would say, well, it was presented to me by one of the factions. I'm not going to disclose. <laughs> I don't want to highlight. <laughs> so I won't disclose. <laughs> but I have Boko Affairs. It's like a summarized document, sort of. I've, I've glanced through, you know, law, uh, you know, uh, law cases, rulings, um, withdrawals, uh, you know, and statements. But uh, we will go through and understand all. Rambo, you're welcome once again. Good evening to you. Let me go on to Zoom and see who is there. Um, Adam Bona is there, right? Okay. Yes, I'm here. Adam, good evening to you. Good evening, Nani. Okay. And I also, okay, we can't hear Adam, so please let me have him in the studio. I can't hear his voice. It's not audible in the studio. Okay. Uh, okay, I think I'm hearing. Adam, can you say hello again? Yes, I can hear you. Okay, great. Like great. You're, you're audible now. Um, Dr. Issa uh, Moro, uh, can you hear me? Yes, I can, Annie. Good great. evening once again. Good evening. You're all clear. You're all clear. Let me just put this across. Just it's Zoom, and sometimes we're timed. So as and when it's timed and it's due and it cuts off, please, we'll let them rejoin, and then we will, we will continue the discussion. All right. Let me start with Adam Bona, uh, you know, to lay the foundation for us to fly because, I mean, they are maybe the peacemakers for now and they will tell us exactly what the situation is. Adam, um, good evening to you again. So um, let's start off what happened today. I have received videos and pictures of what happened earlier on today in Boko where we're told that the, the youth is, you know, going after some people they suspect have been sent to come and uh, assassinate the new installed chief. Um, what is the information you have gathered from there at least today and a few days ago? Well, yes, uh, yes, yes, uh, yes. So, good, good evening to my big brother, uh, Honorable Cleotus Avoka, and the other colleague, 
uh, who is joining us uh, from the United Kingdom. Good evening to him. Uh, I didn't quite get the name. And I do believe that uh, Adi, okay, he's wherever he's Dr. hiding, Isamoru. he's going Yes, so Dr. Isamoro, good evening to you. And I'm sure my brother, my brother Adi, wherever he's hiding, I'm sure he would, he would uh, show up soon. I'm here. Yeah, so this, okay, good, 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 good. All right, so uh, I'm sure issues uh, surrounding Boko and Nalerigo, Wale Wale, and, and all that, uh, you know, has been very fluid in, in the last few days. And some of us actually, uh, you know, would have wished that this uh, wouldn't have escalated to that point. So this morning, some of us picked information that, uh, you know, there were some movement in Nalerigo. And so we quickly had to, uh, you know, alert the security agencies to ensure that uh, it doesn't escalate up to a point where lives will be lost. Eventually, uh, it seemed to have moved to Wale Wale somewhere in the afternoon where the, the, the young people again, uh, you know, blocked some streets and threatening mayhem. Uh, the, and the, their reason, and that was in Wale Wale, and the reason was that they believed that some persons, uh, you know, allegedly have been sent to go and either assassinate the overlord of, of you know, uh, the Mamprugu, uh, you know, the Nairi, and, and some other persons in, in uh, what do you call it, Nalerigo. And so they would not allow them uh, to do that. Obviously, uh, some of us, again, would need to, whatever information we had needed to alert the security agencies to use de-escalation uh, measures because where we have gotten to, uh, it is difficult to say this is right and this is wrong. Lives must not be lost. And so that is what some of us have been doing. And I can tell you, you can see from my face, I am so tired, but I'm sure we have to continue till, uh, you know, some calm and peace returns to Boko, Nalurigo, Wale Wale. And, you know, this evening we are hearing Cheripani, some persons have died, unfortunately, needlessly. So for me, Annie, it yeah. has to do with uh, the young people don't seem to trust leadership of the country. Put it very simple. Uh, because then uh, when you monitor what has been going on, the uh, statements from the Minister of Information, and then you have a warrant of, uh, of arrest, an ex party warrant of, uh, of arrest, and then uh, partially you have uh, part of the warrants rescinded and uh, you have, uh, what do you call it, soldiers moving, soldiers and national security officials, or call them security officials, moving to the Nairis palace and attempting to effect an arrest. For me, that was the silliest thing anybody, if you ask me, would have done. Even though we live in a rule of law country, you cannot imagine in the 21st century an issue of this nature. Two feuding parties are not happy. Already there has been allegation and counter allegation. The expectation would have been that as the escalation measures would have been activated, but to have driven from wherever they were, some of us knew they were on their way there, to attempt to go and went into Nalerigo, when attempting to, is it arrest the Nairi himself or the person who has been instinct? And some of us said, what, what would it amount to if as they went on that suicide mission, persons died, like today in Cheriponi, people have died. And so my point is that, Annie, whatever we are here on your network today to do should be to bring about, you know, de-escalating whatever is happening in the area. Because you see, it is just a little trigger and you have the whole thing moving from ground, moving from zero to hundred. 
and young people begin to mass up because they feel that you see and the truth is that even the young people don't even don't apart from not trusting the leadership in a way of the country they don't also even trust some of their leaders some of their traditional leaders they, they think some of them have been compromised and so we find ourselves in a very dangerous times if you ask me and I so think, Annie, i would me, say let me, that let me ask do you think that government um security installations uh no disrespect are not measuring the uh, correct fluidity of how the situation really is uh which is why it is issuing arrest warrants it is withdrawing the arrest warrants you know it's not really being consistent with how it wants to handle this matter yes because you see Annie, let's be very forthright let's say the way it is the truth is that they are not even coordinating whatever they are doing. There's no coordination. It's not everything I can put out there, uh, you know, too sensitive, I don't have to share. But I can tell you that there is no coordination. Those who must know don't know. Those who know are not acting right, are not, re are not behaving responsibly. And so my point is that if there was proper coordination, probably some of the things we are seeing today would not happen. There's no coordination. So it looks like every Tom, Dick, and Harry gets up. Maybe marshal some forces, picks up some armor tanks, get some one or two soldiers some with national security officers, and say, let's march uh, to the Nairis Palace in Nalerugu uh, because you think, but my point is that even if you had the, the power to do it, I'm sure that you would want to be very circumspect and not do things. It doesn't matter. And I keep saying it. You see, the Kusasis and the Mamprosis, you know what? They are one people. The truth is that they are fighting over chieftaincy. So beyond the chieftaincy, these are one people. Intermarriage is among them. They are blood related. So are we going to use chieftaincy to further divide them and say they should kill one another? Okay, so please. for me, mm. I think government, uh, my government should, should do what is right there should be proper coordination. I have recommended that there should be a sole uh, representative of government, maybe minister, who everybody, when it comes to managing the security situation in Boko, would speak to. But at the moment, everybody is just acting, and most of their decisions are irresponsible. Once they take irresponsible decisions, the young people seem to be catching them because we find ourselves at times in this whole situation. You don't have smart people are not thinking when i say uh, when i it's, it's rather they are not thinking intelligently when i say they are not thinking intelligently what i'm saying is that whatever we do today in this conflict would have to be intelligence led but unfortunately before a lot of these things are done you know information is out there already and so i would urge for calm i'll urge the man process to calm down I would urge the Kusasis to calm down so that when everything is calm, we are able to sit around a table, have some dinner, and discuss these issues that is confronting us. Right. But at the moment, if we attempt to go into who is right and who is wrong, you know what? The young people, everybody says I'm right. And so, and some security couples are behaving, excuse me to say, like the young people. And so once you, be, you begin to behave like the young people who are ready to attack, then you are worse than them. And okay. that is the situation we find ourselves today. Mm. I mean. So, so, so let, let's go to the local level, uh, which I'm engaging uh, Honorable Kletos and uh, Dr. Isa. Uh, Honorable Kletos, if you monitor social media, you have a lot of people who think that these same politicians that you're interviewing are the same people that are fueling what is going on in Boko. Well, thank you, Annie, and then uh, uh, good evening to all your viewers. Um, well, I'm a politician, and then uh, I must say from the onset that me as an individual, as a, an individual politician, I do not fuel the conflict at home. Um, if you take uh, the conflict that started in uh, November 2021, uh, we are six members of parliament from the Kusau area. And then the, 
uh, we belong to the Kwisasi faction. Mm -hmm. So we have we had decided that, uh, given our positions, uh, we should not inflame inflame passions in this dispute. We should try to be measured in what we do and what we say. So, Annie, you will realize that since November 2021, we, the six MPs from the Boko area, uh, did not make a statement on the floor of the House condemning one faction or another, supporting one faction or another. We did not. We did not go on the spree uh, addressing press conferences, etc., etc. The only first time we went to Boko was sometime in the middle of last year when we discovered that there was a, 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 a clash between the military and some civilians. And we thought that that was unfortunate. Mm -hmm. The military are there to maintain law and order. And if there is loss of confidence between the civilian and the military, it can be exacerbated. So we went to the site, went to Boabule village where the police and soldiers had gone to that village and caused mayhem, destroyed properties, etc. And they went to one of our uh, divisional chiefs, Pali Puzga, then ransacked the place and then terrorized the chief and then harassed him. And then the, we thought that that was unfortunate. So we went to uh, Boku, the six of us, went to those areas and assured them that there, there is, it is important for them to coexist with the military. It is important for them to make sure that the security personnel are there to protect them and not they are there to engage them. And then we also went to the soldiers at the end of the day and then pleaded with them to be more professional in their, in their activities and Clarify the work that they this. do. And where you went to let them understand that yes. the, the military is there to ensure peace, which area was it? Was it largely Kusasi area? The, it is, the, 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 the attack was uh, on the Kusasi area where they had attacked civilians. They had gone out of Boku town okay. to a village and then burned down some houses. They burned down food, food, uh, food, uh, food uh, staff bags. Mm -hmm. They burned down motorcycles, uh, uh, tricycles, etc. And then even uh, killed one or two people, including some women whom they had maimed. So we thought, that, and then, as I said, they had gone to one of the chief's palaces and then uh, ransacked the area. So that is what uh, we, were, we were alarmed by this seeming conflict between the, 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 the civilians and then, and then the security on the ground. We didn't, that want, we didn't want that to continue. So we had to go to the site to try to broker a peace and bring them together, let the civilians know that they have to respect the security on the ground. They are there for peacekeeping. Is that not? In front of the cameras. We yes. don't know what you do behind the cameras. Well, uh, <laughs> well, doing behind the cameras, I must assure you that I know what the six of us have been doing. Because you said as an individual. Yes, I can testify. Influence. But I say uh, we, every day we meet, we talk, we discuss. I have, there have been no occasion where we have decided we should fuel this conflict. It doesn't pay. For our side, for us, we the Kwesase people, we are the chiefs of the area. Uh, the Bokunaba, his late father was there since 1957. He took over in 1984. So he is the chief of Boku. What is the point we being aggressive? What is the point we going out to attack Mampurisi or other people? Our people have a saying, our elders have a saying, that if you are a dog and you have a bone in your mouth, you don't back for the bone to drop so that another dog can pick it and run away and you lose. So, so if we are that, chiefs, we that. should be bringing people together for so the development of the that? area. We, are, we will never be the first to go out fight, fighting for what again. Mm. So is that to say that because you are ruling, yes. you have rather been on the defensive and exactly. reactive exactly. side. Exactly. We have been so on the defensive. So you've been reactive. Exactly. Because we don't gain anything by going out to fight. And get what? The issue at stake is chieftaincy. We are chiefs. Our, our, our chief is there. We want him to benefit from the fruits of his labor. We want him to be respected and to enjoy the skin. What is the point in going out to attack? Attack people and get what they gain. What is at stake that we are attacking people? And as Bona, Dr. Bonas said, we and the Mampurisa are very interrelated. Uh, one of us, one of the MPs, or Mama Ayaraga, the right. mother is a Mampurisa. Right. And we have that relationship. We have been very close. So what is the point in going out? You will recall that sometime last year, he mentioned about, I mean, uh, I mean uh, inertia in government. I mean, what is happening there can be, one, you can say that there's inertia. You can say that there is a, a misjudgment in many of the things that the security are doing or government is doing. You can say that there's complacency sometimes. 
you can say there's complicity. It's one of these, or a combination of some of these that is taking place there. Because at one occasion, sometime last year, uh, the security personnel went to the Mampulisi Elders Palace. I met all of them there. And they said, among other things, that until they make them chiefs of Boku, until they become chiefs of Boku, there will be no peace. They said so publicly, openly, that there will be no peace until they are made chiefs of Boku. So who are the aggressors? And that is exactly what happened and, and, on the 15th and, and exactly, of February. And that's exactly that what... That there is a legitimate chief on the ground. Well, so that's exactly what Adam Bona is drawing our minds to, that where we have gotten to, yes. um, we cannot... It really, it's not a time to apportion blames yeah. and identify who is being aggressive yeah. and who is a rightful owner of the land and, and things like that, okay. which is what we expect that you, being opinion leaders and having a voice in government, would lead yes. that agenda yeah. of yes. not necessarily even accusing someone, especially from the man proceed from you coming, being a Kusol, and saying that, well, we are not the aggressors, they are the aggressors. Mm -hmm. When I hear you, as uh, you know, uh, Kratos Avocat speak like that, you're not speaking peacefully. <laughs> I'm surprised, Annie, you, that you are saying this. You are this. accusing... No, you, you, you no are then you are not appreciating what, uh, where I'm coming from, what I'm saying. I'm saying that from the word go, we have tried to be measured. We have tried to make sure that we don't inflame passions. We have tried to give government and the security the opportunity to be able to reconcile or bring uh, law and order to the aid and reconcile the people. This is what we have been doing. We have engaged the honorable ministers of interior, defense, and national security on several occasions, suggesting ways and means of bringing peace to the area. We have engaged His Excellency the President in the Jubilee House, six of us. We went there engaged him and gave him a roadmap as to how there can be peace in the area. Have you engaged opinion leaders from the Mampurisi side before? We, cannot, we, we, need, we need somebody, a, a third party, to pr provide that, uh, uh, that platform. Okay. It's not me to call a Mampurisi and say, come and let's talk. It's not easy to do that. But you can because do of that. the mutual suspicion. It's not easy, but you can do yeah, that. Yeah, we can do that. We are capable of doing that. After all, uh, there are one or two MPs from uh, that, uh, that area. Right. We have been engaging. But we think that we need government of, uh, or some other people to be able to provide a, a platform for more I mean, a constructive engagement. Okay. And then uh, we are prepared to do that. And we have been doing, we have been singing that song that we need constructive engagement. We need sustained engagement, not a one touch engagement. Mm -hmm. We have told the president he's invited the Nairi to Accra about once or thereabout. We said that this is somebody who needs consistent, constructive engagement by some people. Because like we have been saying, we have called judgment, we have called rulings, but people don't appreciate and understand. Mm. It needs to be explained to some people to understand. In terms of consistency, do you have a challenge of uh, not having a one mouthpiece channel of communication? Are you having communication from different channels? Which, which group of people? Uh, maybe government can come in, m m uh, police can come in, a military can come in, Ministers will come in, and yeah. there is not a particular channel that you are having a one uh, um, consistent communication through, like uh, Adam Bona was mentioning. Well, yes, I mean, because everybody is like trying to be a master well, of the I, situation. I, I, I in don't know. Whatever happens, we, we normally channel our engagement with the ministers in charge of uh, national security. So national security. That's why I mentioned that we have been engaging the Minister of Defense, Interior, and National Security. We have been engaging His Excellency the President on this subject. And these are people we think that they'll be coordinating. And when they coordinate, they should be talking with one mouth right. and one voice okay. and then one, one issue consistently. Whether, whether they have been engaged or not, I cannot tell at, at where I sit. Mm -hmm. yeah, but we have identified them as people who are in charge of security in the country, who are in charge of events in Boku, and therefore they should be able to I mean, bring about normalcy to the area. We have been doing that. Hmm. <laughs> the, 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 the book I have, I will, I will engage <laughs> Dr. Abbas. <laughs> The book I have, um, The Boko Affairs, is a, is a report of the committee appointed by His Excellency, the Acting Governor General, to uh, inquire into the reports, its findings on the claim of the Abugu Rago, right, Azoka, to have been elected or appointed and installed as chief of the Kusasi area. Dr. Baz, you know about this uh, Boko Affairs summary? Okay. I think I'm, I'm just going to try and get them back. Um, 
Zoom, like I said, if they stay on it for some minutes, it will, it will go off and then we'll restore them. So let's try and see if we can still work around it. So um, let, me, uh, let me come back to you with me in the studio. Yeah. When the statement of government went out that arrests, you know, all the uh, supporting perpetrators, uh. perpetrators of the enskinment, and then it comes again and says, oh, withdraw the arrest or we seen the decision. You as a lawyer, what did that mean to you? Well, um, as a lawyer and then a the, uh, senior citizen, uh, we have to be professional. Um, I was not surprised about the second um, attempt in court to uh, withdraw the, uh, the charge on the Nairi. Um, we are all Ghanaians, and then the, we have respect for some people, the elderly, some office holders, and the rest of them. Uh, without prejudice, uh, I thought that, I mean, being the Nairi, uh, or even me or you, if they want to arrest you, they don't just come here and then pick you and say they're arresting you. They can ask management to, bring, to let you come to report to the police station. For mm -hmm. me, that, that is uh, why to arrest a, an MP, okay. there's a procedure. Mm -hmm. They will come to the speaker, ask him to release him to come and report to the police. I thought that they could have uh, sent to the, the, Mampu, the Nairis Palace and give him, ask him that they want him to report to the police station or at this or place. At, in yeah, to assist investigations. Give him that due respect because whether we like or not, he's the overlord of Mampu. We mm. should respect him as such. So government could have said that, okay, uh, Nairis, uh, uh, come today or tomorrow to this place to prefer a statement on what happened on the 15th of uh, uh, February uh, 2023. They could have done that. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. And they could have trailed. The government could have used its intelligence mm -hmm. and then allow this uh, person that the Nigeria has enskinned and then trail him. And when he's out of the palace, then he can be picked. Okay. Uh -huh. okay. That one, they wouldn't have had this youth People, youth going to the town and burning ties and blocking roads and whatnot and whatnot. Yeah, because they said that police and so were there to arrest the Nairi. Okay. You know, that one is disturbing. Okay. And I thought that we could have been more circumspect. Okay, let's go to uh, Dr. Issa Moro. Uh, Doc. Uh, I, uh, Annie, 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 I hope you haven't forgotten me. Um, who, who, who is on our Adip? Is this yeah. Adip? I've been on the line since. Uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, because I, I actually engaged uh, Adam when I was going to come to you later. Um, but, but, uh, but Okay. Okay, but let me, your, your, your video is off, are you? I think your, okay, your video is it's on wrong. now. Okay, um, and is Doctor on, is Amora on? Yes, I'm on. Okay, Doc, let me engage you, I'll come to Adib later. Um, so, because I want to deal with at the local at the local level, I was asking um, uh, Honourable uh, Azoka that uh, if you, as opinion leaders, can communicate at a certain level, from your side, is it possible that you also do it at that level, or you also need an intermediary, and why? Thank you very much, Annie, and then good evening to you, and then your listeners, and then to my co-panelists. Uh, I have listened to what uh, Dr. Adam Bona has said and then uh, Mr. Avoka. And then narrowing down to your question, the dynamics in Boko or the Boko conflict, I am a healthcare practitioner. And then one important thing in healthcare practice is that you need to diagnose a, a patient very well before you can treat the patient. If you fail in your diagnosis, then you are you would be silently killing your patient, and that is the problem we have in Boko. The problem has not been well diagnosed. Listening to uh, Mr. Avoka in the first place, I was a bit sad with the greatest of respect to him and then our listeners. Honestly, I was a bit sad because uh, if MPs who are elected by people and you can't know those who elected you. Some of them might be Mamprusis, some of them might be Kusasis, some of them might be Bises. Only for Mr. Avoka to state on live TV that they belong to one faction, which is the Kusasis. That, I think, honestly, was, was, was totally un, 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 unfair to some of the 
Mabrusis and the Kusasis, who I know very well have voted for, 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 for some of them. For some of the that MPs. Is what, what were you expecting yeah. him to have said? That is one. That is one. And then two. Okay, hold on. He said you didn't understand. You, Clarify. You, what you, are, you, are, you have caught me out of context. Everybody knows that we are Kusasis. Whether we like or not, a decorated donkey is still an ass. They know so. But I said, notwithstanding that, we have tried, the MP have tried to be measured mm -hmm. since the, 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 the conflict started in November 2021. That is why we have not gone out of our way to make any statements on the floor of the House or press conferences, etc., or whatever forum. And neither has the man proceeded. Yes. Okay. I mean, we, have, we have said that. So you are quoting me out of context with the okay. greater respect to you. Okay. Okay. And we would not have even gone to Boku. We said because there was security collision with civilians. We thought we should go and educate the civilians that these soldiers are sacrificed and have come there to protect you, okay. to bring about peace. So you have no duty going out, engaging them in combat. Okay. That is why we went. Okay. We didn't go there to Boku to, to try to, to, to incite or to try to settle the matter and whatnot. We think the government is doing that. Okay, Dr. So Bass, he's quoting me uh, out of context. Dr. Bass, I think we're clear. You continue. Thank you very much once again. Before I go to the next presentation, uh, Honorable made a categorical statement that when the security visited the Mamprusi faction, they said it, or they, they made the point that until they were made the chiefs of Boko, there would never be peace in Boko. With the greatest of respect again, I think this is not true. If Honorable has that evidence, I'm, I'm very open. He can get it for you okay. right away. Then you play it on live TV. Nothing like that was said. And I know exactly what was said, but I won't say it. He, if he has that evidence, he should present it now. That is the, what, what we want. <laughs> now, moving forward again, mm -hmm. he said that they had played a very neutral role. And then I am sure Ghanaians are watching. Ever since the conflict started, Mr. Avoka and then Mahama, Honorable Mahama Ayarga, they had been moving from TV station to TV station, granting interviews. And like he said, nobody is saying that nobody can take away your identity from you, no. But if you are a public officer, and then people from all various walks of life or people with different identities are assumed to have supported you or voted for you to go to parliament, if you are making public commentary on the issues, you have to be very cautious. Mr. Avokai has made several statements. And then we had the, at the point in time, we had to write petitions to some of the TV stations and then the radio stations to tell them that, look, each time you are inviting them, you invite them as members of parliament. But when they come, they only present the side of the story of the faction they come from, which we thought was not appropriate at all. We have written, I don't want to mention the names of the TV stations and the radio stations here, but we have done that. Now, moving forward again, he says that the mom process, we have always been on the aggressive side. And then uh, I would just like to state on record, there has been one committee that has been, uh, uh, that was set up in 1984. It was set up to investigate the Bokulat's dispute. And then Mr. Clevis Avoka actually participated in the hearings of that committee, he represented the Kusasi faction. When was this? And then the committee in 1984. 1934. And the committee, 1984, 84. 84, okay. Yes. And the committee was chaired by Colonel Retired Mila. He's a household name in the Upper East, and then everyone knows him. There is a fundamental finding that the, the committee makes which I'm sure Mr. Kletus Avoka knows, and I would just like to read it briefly here. Because at that time, Mr. Kletus Avoka and co, they were the leaders of what we call the Kusasi Youth Association. And listen to this fundamental finding that the committee made. It says that the Kusasi Youth Association is the pivot from where disturbances are spread around the Boku district, and also the brainchild of all disturbances such as the ransacking of the Boku Traditional Council. And Mr. Klebus Tavoka actually participated in this committee. He went there and granted evidence in support of the Kusasi. And this is an indictment. And his name was mentioned in that committee. Moving forward again, the committee made one astonishing finding again. And it said that 
The Mapruses, because in 83 and 84, there had been conf uh, uh, armed conflicts in Boko. It says that the Mapruses were provoked by the Kusasis into fighting the December 1983 and July 1984 uprisings. No committee has ever indicted a Mapruse of sparking the conflict in Boko. And then there is another vital point which I believe the security agencies watching us will take note of. The committee made the finding that the Kusasis have a plan to drive the Mapruses and their sympathizers out of the Boko area. So you realize that it is not only about chieftaincy, but they view the existence of the Mapruses in Boko as an existential threat. These are the findings of the committee. Okay? Now, quickly, I just want to move back to the press release. What was the name of this committee you're referring to? The, the committee to investigate the Boko land disputes. And it was 1984. Yes, chaired by Kenel Mila and then Mr. Kletus Avoka and lawyer Joseph Abanga. They represented the Kusasi functions, if a faction in the findings of this committee. The findings are so many, I don't want to spend much time talking about them. Yeah. I'll entreat everyone to be there. So the point I was making is that look, Mamprusis are peace loving. No Mamprusi has ever started any conflict in Boko. Not at all. And I am only making this point because Mr. Avoka said they had always been on the receiving side which I disagree, and I have read the portions of the, 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 the committee's report. Now, the fundamental issue now here is that, Annie, yeah. why are we here? That is the point. And you see, when you listen to the press release that uh, Mr. Avoka and then the other five MPs read, declaring the actions of the Nairi as null and void, and then also the statement that uh, Mr. Kojo Opong Nkrumah released, mm -hmm. also declaring the actions of the Nairi as null and void, and then making certain statements that are not very good. If you look at it, and I'm going to make a point here, that it appeared as if it is only in Boko that you had, or you have two parallel chiefs. I am very grateful that uh, before you started, you, you spoke about the issue in Accra currently, where there are two parallel chiefs, and then one faction is complaining that they have been gazetted, that they are not recognized. Mm -hmm. But nowhere would you get a government issuing such a statement because it is totally fun fundamentally wrong. Mm -hmm. Okay? Mm -hmm. Now, Boko, this is not the first time Boko is witnessing the concept of two parallel chiefs. I will summarize quickly and then you understand where I am going to. Because if we don't know the problem, we can't get the solutions. In 1957, that was when Boko saw a first parallel chief. In 1957, the law at that time, specifically Section 5.1 of the State Council's uh, Northern Territories Ordinance, okay, mm -hmm. it, 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 it guaranteed the Nairi as the one who enskins Boko because Boko is part of the Mampruku Kingdom. So when Nairi enskins a new Boko Naba in 1957, the Kusasis by then, led by an individual by the name Dubiele Hebi, who was not even a Kusasi, he's a Bisa man. They said that they were enskinning a parallel chief. And they actually did. They, they, they said they had elected Abu Grago Azoka as a parallel chief, which was against the law. So what happened was that the government agent at that time wrote a letter to the ministry of the local government and said that what they did was wrong. But the government didn't interfere. And the Mampruses did not attack anyone they did not also threaten government that if government does not come into the issues they were going to do do this and that the mapruses actually wrote to the police and complained that look this is what these people have done which is against the law and it was Alaji Mumuni Baumia who was the state secretary for the Mampugu kingdom mm -hmm. when he wrote that letter to the police the police the police replied and said that it was a civil matter so they couldn't go in. If the Mapruzi state can take the case up itself, they should do it. And so the Mapruzis had to write to their lawyers so that they would file a case against the Kusasis who had so-called elected themselves as chiefs. And that is what we did. When we did that, the Kusasis refused to enter appearance in the law court because they were expecting that the government would constitute a committee of inquiry. So they didn't enter appearance in the court. If they had done that, the case would have been settled peacefully. Okay, that was the first time a parallel chief was elected in Boko, and it was not done by the Mampruses. 
1979 again, at that time, there was a gazetted chief of Boku by the name Na Adam Tampuri. He was the chief of Boku from 1967 to 1981. But in 1979, an interesting thing happened. And I'm happy that Mr. Kledus Avoka is, is, is with us today. In September 1979, uh, 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 Mr. Kledus Avoka, who was a leading member of the Kusasi Youth Association, they released what they called a resolution saying that they had recognized Abugrago Azoka as the chief of Boko. At a time when there was a gazetted chief of Boko, okay, not only a gazetted chief, but the chief was the vice president of the upper regional house of chiefs. But this is what Mr. Cleves Avoka encoded. Today they can organize a press conference and say that what the Nairi did is now a void. But it doesn't even end there. When they and skinned a parallel chief in 1979. The man process did not threaten anyone again. We took the matter to the High Court in 1980. And Mr. Avoka is here. When we took the matter to the High Court in time, 1980, in the 1980s uh, and the 57s that you are talking about, was it as, as violent as it is today? Who describes what violent, uh, who can describe what violence is, or who dictates what should be violent and what shouldn't be violent? I am telling you that they did this and we refused to be violent. That is the point I am making. Dr. Abbas, and we never Dr. Abbas hold on. Government. Hold on, hold on. Yeah. I yes. don't think that we are going to be intellectually dishonest with the word violence or violence. Yes. When yes. I talk about violence today, you know what I'm talking about. It has been bloody, yes. and I don't like using the word bloody on TV or radio, but it has been... Yes violent really yeah. i mean uh to an extent we don't even expect you know lives have been lost and so i don't even know how you want to define what violence is i'm asking that those days when uh, uh and schemes were done that we had other factions that were opposed to it was it this violent and it, if it was not why has it become so today Yes, I, mean, I, would, I would shortly get to that if you... Uh, you you, you don't have a lot of time here. I'm, I'm going to catch you soon, so if you can just quickly yes. move into that. Yes. yes. So what I'm saying is that in 1979, when they elected a parallel chief, we went to the high court to restrain them. Mm. And Mr. Avoka appeared. He was a lawyer then. He appeared as a lawyer for the Kusasis. And the high court actually granted us. Okay? This was and then restrained them and restrain them, pardon? But this was which year? That was in 1980. 1980. In 1980. Did you withdraw yes. this later? No, 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 no. That is what I'm telling you. When they uh, elected a, a parallel chief, we went to the high court to restrain them because we knew that it was a civil matter. I'm, I'm asking, did you withdraw this restraint in 2003? No, 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 no. This is a, a restraint we went from uh, the high court to restrain the Kusasis from acting as chiefs. Okay. Like the way we have a parallel chief, uh, there's a so-called parallel chief, or mm -hmm. they are saying a parallel chief. Okay. What they could have done is they could have also gone to the high court to get a restraining order against the man pussy, which they have not done. Right. Okay, that's the point I'm making. Right. So when the high court granted the man pussies the restraining order, Mr. Avoka was the lawyer for the Kusasis. And that should have just ended it, but they did not. Okay? In 1981, the man chief passed, and according to the customs of the man tradition, they were supposed to perform a funeral and then enskin another chief again. Mm. And Mr. Clevis Avoka, who was a, 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 a stalwart of the PNDC, they, and, and also a member of the Kusasi Youth Association, they thwarted those efforts until 1983, when a National House of Chiefs ruling even came in favor of the man process again. So I am giving you these sentences so that everyone would understand that there has been a problem. The National House of Chiefs ruling came in favor of the man process. Still, they said they won't allow the man process to perform their funeral and then end skin. Okay. That fast is how forward. I'm over Do 40 Dr. years now. Dr. Bass, fast forward. You know, when it comes to the history of, of, of this uh, dispute, um, you, you seem to have, okay, let me put it this way. The man process seems to have their summary and the Kusasi seem to have their summary. Now, we can only get into this history and try to settle the issue after we have made Tempest cool down. 
So let's fast forward mm -hmm. to today, right? Let's fast forward to today. And the point, I mean, the point I was just making is that if someone enskins someone you think is a parallel chief, what you can do is you go to court and then seek a restraining order. Government doesn't have any right, okay, to say that they are going to arrest a parallel chief. And I'll just cite a, a case withdrawn. in 2011. No, mm -hmm. it's, this case is important because in 2011, a gentleman by the name Sule Afoli Abdurrahman from Boku, 2010, he wrote a piece and said that Boku did not have a chief in 2010. Mm -hmm. Then the Kusasis reported him to the, the state and the state arrested him. Mm -hmm. That is why I'm saying that everything you need to be very careful with how you manage it. When right. they arrested him, they said that he had made false statements. And when the case was sent to the high court, the high court judge acquitted and discharged the, 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 the one who was arrested. The Sali Fuga. The one who said Boku, the Sule, the one who said Boku had, that was in 2011. Mm. He said Boku had no chief. And the state arrested him, and then they charged him, and then prosecuted him. At the end, the high court acquitted and discharged the man and said that the man did not mm. peddle any falsehood. Because at that time, the statement the man made was right. That is in 2011. So that is why I'm saying that if you see the Nairi and skinning, and people don't understand what the Nairi is. The Nairi, it means that, the name Nairi means that the house of chieftaincy. This is someone who started his chieftaincy in the 13th century. So he knows the traditions and whatever he does. If you dispute him, the only way you can do is how, how did it just so happen that now the reality hits you that this is someone who started his chief chancy uh, something in the, in the 13th century and now you have to enskin him? How did you get to, why did you wait this long to enskin him now? That, uh, that is why I'm saying that in 1981, that is why I was giving you the synthesis. In 1981, the chief passed away, who was the gazetted chief. So okay. there was supposed to be an enskinment. Right. Okay, right. But the the Kusasi Youth Association, led by Mr. Boka and Co, said no, it would not happen. Even when there was a high court ruling in his favor, when there was a national house of chiefs ruling in his favor. Okay, so this is long saying, overdue. Yes, yeah, so it is long overdue. Okay, hold on. That let me let me I engage Ad, Adib Sani. I'm sorry, I'll come back to you. I'll, I'll come back to you. I'll engage Adib Sani now. Adib, thank you for your time. Uh, I'm I'm sorry for, <laughs> but thanks for your patience. So let me engage you right. now. Um, <laughs> it's not no, easy. It's, it is a serious matter, by the way. You know, um, I, I listened to uh, my co panelist and a number of profound things were said. Um, but I'll just touch a bit of, let me piggyback um, what my brother, uh, Dr. Imuru, said. The thing is, um, under the Constitution, in the laws, the government is not supposed to meddle in chieftaincy matters. But there's a caveat. The government comes in when there's a criminal element to it. OK? Um, it was great listening to them. I mean, there's a lot of things we can learn. It is in learning the past and appreciating it that we will be able to chart a more progressive course. They both have great histories, OK? Right. But as to who is right and who is wrong, it depends on uh, you know, what part of history you decide to start from, all right? Mm. I speak to a number of security issues, but I must say, Talking about Boku still remains the most challenging topic to talk about. I mean, so sometimes when I hit a snag, I call Dr. Imuru, I call, I call Honorable Avoka, I speak with uh, Abu Gri Haruna, uh, Bagura, and sometimes I even call uh, Dr. Buna. But what our focus sh should be at mm -hmm. this particular point mm -hmm. is how what the way forward is, how we can restore peace in Boku. Mm -hmm. um, recently, I was having a discussion with Doctor, and we were talking about the fact that Boku could have rivaled Bogatanga as the Upper East Regional uh, Capital. It has a lot of potentials, 
It is very strategically situated. Unfortunately, the conflict has almost destroyed the town. A lot of young people who could have you know, contributed in many ways to develop the town have left the place. It's almost a ghost town. So, Annie, I would propose that in as much as the history is important, and I must say it's been a great learning curve for me, um, what our focus should be right now is how to bring not just peace, but a sustainable peace to Boku. And I think that should be the focus. Um, Adip, do you think that uh, government interference now is questionable considering the fact that lives are being lost, government itself is spending, um, 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 you know, on this dispute, and it's doing so much to ensure peace because it can, and maybe this, you are the security analyst, you can tell us that it can get to a level where it can escalate and affect the whole nation. So when we continue on the path of, oh, government should not meddle in chieftaincy matters, yes, but these chieftaincy matters are now getting into aggregates where it is affecting the nation as a whole. I was in Accra the other time with a friend who told me that one of the persons that was killed was his cousin. And this person actually lives in the greater Accra, but of course, occasionally must go home. So how do we, you know, come to a point where we accept that, yes, it's gotten to a point government must come in. And then also, um, the National House of Chiefs, at what point should they play a role? Must they come in, uh, you know, to also play their role? Well, first of all, it is important to note that it is the responsibility of every government, Annie, to ensure this, the safety and security of its citizens' home and abroad and of all foreigners within its territorial you know, confines or space. And so we cannot tickle ourselves about the importance of government involvement in ensuring peace and security in every part of the country. Unfortunately, and this is very important, politics is supposed to have been our strength so far as finding a lasting solution to this is concerned. Unfortunately, politics has remained one of the biggest challenges because there are some who benefit politically, financially, and are stoking the fire. Government has done a lot. But I think there's still a lot more government can do. Because when you take a closer look at the modus over the years, and it comes across the political divide, I must say, our strategy has been ad hoc, um, it's been superficial, and we have failed consistently to deal with the very fundamentals. So what do they do? Mostly. Let us deploy police and military personnel to the area. Um, the imposition of curfews. Today, I was speaking with um, a top-ranked uh, military person who told me that, look, curfews are not meant to last over a long time. They are usually a temporal measure to stop the belligerents and give us that unique opportunity to engage more to find a lasting solution. So I think that government has different roles it can play. And one of the most important roles government can play is not just with the ad hoc short-term measures, but with the long-term as well. How do we get the two sides talking? How do we deal with the other fundamental issues, such as the human insecurities in the area that is pushing some people into thinking that the only way out is through uh, violence. Access to education, access to food, uh, water, 
health care, jobs for young people, etc. I think by looking at some of these long-term measures, it should help. But one thing that we need to pay attention to is the immediate cause. Why are they fighting? Do we so have... I think the chief council bit of it, the chief council bit of it, is very important. I know there are some criminal elements who are taking advantage of the status quo to engage in other forms of criminality, including weapons trafficking, human trafficking, etc. Yeah. So government, I must say, has a very important role to play in that regard. Is the problem of Boko, um, you know, does it, uh, it, maybe the strength of government security apparatus, does it outweigh us as a country? How is it that we, I, I just can't understand how we are not able to bring it under control where sometimes somebody will call me from Boko and there is life, it's like we're on the war zone. Exchange of gunfire, yeah. Exchange of gunfire. Is it bigger than this country and our security agencies? Um, for the records, no issue within the country can be bigger than the state. Okay? I do understand. And even today, I had that discussion with Dr. Bona. I was seeking to find out how come sometimes consistently for over 48 hours, they exchange fire yeah. and nobody is able to do anything about it. Okay? I know sometimes um, the military is overwhelmed. Mm -hmm. And from the information I have gathered, mostly the patrols is on the major streets, the major roads. But the combatants have, have devised ways to sometimes, I don't want to use out smart, but to move around uh, under the radar to stage attacks elsewhere and return to uh, their base. So I think um, the presence of um, security personnel is important, but we would have to enhance uh, the way to keep an eye on the area. So in real time, when a shot is fired. You'll be able to tell where it is coming from. I was speaking with an officer on the ground who told me that, look, you would hear gunfire at point A. By the time you rush there and get there, it stops and there's gunfire at point B. And by the time you get to point B, there's gunfire at point C. You know, so it makes it really very difficult for right. them. But like I always say, uh, we need to address the fundamental issues. If not, if not, perhaps today they will stop fighting, but tomorrow they will fight again. All right. Uh, I, I, I'm, I'm following certain conversations on social media. I will engage M Michael to tell us what's going on there. But uh, Dr. Uh, Moro, I have a question for you. Let's take a breather. When, when, when we come back, I will engage you, um, and then I'll come back to the studio with uh, Honorable Member uh, Cleto Savok. I'll be back shortly. Let's take a break.
To remind you that we're still mourning as a nation, we're still in the state of mourning, uh, one of our cherished sons of this land, Christian Achu. And so uh, also be reminded and your pr prayers, you know, go out to his family. May you still continue to rest in peace. I'm still uh, on, on the Boku issue and uh, I'm with Dr. Isa Moro, who's a lecturer and a Mampusi opinion leader, also um, lawyer, Kretas Ab advocate, member of parliament for Zepila constituency and also Ikusasi opinion leader for that matter. But also with uh, two uh, security analysts, Adam Bona is with me and also Adip San is also foreign policy and security analysts also joining us via Zoom. So let's continue. Um, Doc, can you hear me? Yes, I can. Thank great, you. Great. You're, you're welcome. Um, I get the sense that as a Mampusi or the faction Mampusis feel left out. Do you feel so? Do you feel like you've been relegated to the background? Absolutely. That is a problem we have faced for a very long time from government, from the media, and then from a number of stakeholders. And that is why I have to commend uh, Metro TV for giving us this opportunity, because since the issue started, we have not had the opportunity to, to say anything. Okay? Mm -hmm. And then particularly in government, government is the major stakeholder. But I must be honest with you with the greatest of respect, with the respect I have for this government, I must be honest with you, government has failed woefully with regards to the Boko issue. And remember I told you earlier that diagnosing a problem is almost 80% of solving the problem. Right. And that is what government has failed. Okay? From the onset, because I have participated in meetings that the government has organized between Manpursis and Kusasis. From the onset, government has tried to run away from what the key problem in Boko is. And then there is this uh, Nazi and, and, and what propaganda. is that key problem? A chieftaincy. Because, Nazi. you know, Nazi, the Nazi propagandist Joseph Goebbels said that if you tell a lie well and then repeat it often, it appears to be the truth. But it will not last. At the, at, at the, at the end, people will get to see what the real problem is. From the onset, when the issue started, it was a funeral that was performed by the Mampusis, Annie. So if the state, you felt that it was wrong, or if the Kusasis felt that it was wrong, like I told you, these are civil matters. You don't have to start violence. What you need to do is go to the law court. But the state waded in and then claimed that there was a so-called Supreme Court ruling. And because of that, they were going to prosecute the people who performed the funeral. Annie, as we speak, I would dare you to ask the security agencies. The matter was sent to court, and the court struck the case out for want of prosecution. <laughs> OK? That is, that is where we are. So the government should have known that the posture they started from the beginning, they should have altered it, but they never altered the posture. Because if they perform a funeral, and you claim that there is a gazetted chief mm. who has a Supreme Court ruling in his favor, mm -hmm. you take the suspects to court, and the court strikes the case out. That should tell you that there is a real problem you are not seeing. But they never learned. I was part of a meeting in Tamale when the defense minister and then the interior minister came and met us with the national security coordinator, the acting national security coordinator. And guess what? When they came, the first thing they told us was that they were not discussing chieftaincy here. Okay. Then I got up and told them that, look, with the greatest of respect, 
every conflict you see in this world, it has a root cause. Yeah, it emanates from causes. somewhere. Yes. So if you are running away from the root cause and you are pretending, by the time you realize the problem will be very complicated. Mm. They said, no, we should talk about the immediate causes. And these immediate causes, you cannot get lasting solution if you don't address the root cause. Because the immediate causes, you continue to do firefighting, but the root cause so continues to be there. Right. So government, to be honest, has not been very straightforward, and they have not handled this issue very, very well. And I pray that... Is this, making, are... is this making you emotional and driving you to the levels at which we're seeing? Uh, not in terms of uh, violence. No, I don't subscribe to violence. And I don't advocate for anyone to do to, 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 to commit violence. But what I subscribe to is advocacy or positive defiance. And that is what I've been doing. And I must be honest with you, I have friends who are part of government. And I have tried severally. Uh, 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 my brother Adib is there. Dr. Bona, he doesn't know me, but I have spoken with him before, but he doesn't know it is me. I have tried to tell all these people that, look, government needs to confront the issue. I have done that severally. So what we're but seeing is positive the, defiance. Yes. Well, what I'm doing now is, is advocacy. That's the little I can do. Right. That's the little. Because oh. I have the point. I have written, uh, let me disclose, I have written to parliament. I have written to some key government appointees just to explain these issues to them. Okay. Some of them tell me they have understood, but there's nothing they can do. Okay. Okay. With well, regards to this... Okay, okay, okay. I'll come back to you. Um, uh, Honorable Avoka, you wanted to... Yeah, to uh, at least uh, respond to some few issues okay, that he yeah, raised. Briefly, so that yes. we don't have a lot of time. Very well, okay. okay. Uh, first and foremost, my brother, Dr. Issa, seemed to be so obsessed about a supposed Colonel Minila report mm -hmm. or findings. Mm -hmm. Admittedly, in 1984... The committee. The committee, yeah. The committee was set for uh, Colonel Minila, who was a chairman. Uh, and that was in respect of land disputes in Bopo. It was a chieftaincy matter. I appeared before the Kenya uh, Mila Committee. And it was in respect of land disputes. And land disputes were not just between Kusase and Mampurises, between Kusase and Mampurises, Mampurises and then, and then Mogushis, and then Kusase and Bises, and Bises and Mampurises, and the rest. It was a gamut of land conflict in Bopo oh. at the time. So it was a chieftaincy matter yeah, in but, 1984. But, but, let me learn. Let yeah, but this particular... So he's so the, obsessed the about it. The situation still, uh, you know, bothers about... Uh, it's, it's, it, what he's saying now is very irrelevant. In the first place, one, can the meaningless committee report was never published, number one, if it was so good. Number two, there was no white paper on can, can the meaningless report on the Boko matters. Nothing. So I, mean, I don't know why he's still obsessed about can the meaningless report. We should address current issues. He made a, an unfortunate statement that the so-called paramount chief of Boko. He's not a so-called paramount chief. This is somebody who was legally skinned, then registered at the traditional council, the, the, the original House of Chiefs, National House of Chiefs, and gazetted in 1986 as a legitimate chief of Boko by due process. And he, as the government uh, statement indicated, he's a member of the National House of Chiefs, he's a member of the Upper East Regional House of Chiefs. So he's a parliament chief, substantive. So he's not a so-called chief. He has to watch his language. Because I, I, I have, we've tried to be measured because we are trying to, for we reconciliation. Have to be, yes, not, we have not, to be. not to be irresponsible in our statements mm. and the rest D of Dr. them. Dr. Abbas, I hope yes. that is fair. Th that is not correct. And then, uh, yeah, I was a stalwart in the ND PNDC. And I was not a stalwart in whatnot. PNDC has seen the situation and discovered that there might be social justice in the country. What he's preaching now, what they are talking about, is colonialism. A man, prison man, becomes from the northern region, a northeast region, becomes a Bokunabe in the Kusasi area, and head chief of Kusasi area. Honey, in this modern era, how can you have one tribe, one ethnic group, becoming a paramount chief of a different ethnic group? It doesn't exist. Even if there were no legal decision in our favor, ordinarily, nobody will tolerate this. And he should be the first to accept this. Now he talk about, he doesn't understand what government is doing. Government is not interfering to chieftaincy. Government, the president of the day has taken an oath to defend the constitution, to have uphold the, the due process of law and the rule of law. 
They carry Mbokunaba. They voluntarily sent him to the Supreme Court in 2003, asking for a declaration that the, the Supreme Court should declare PNDC I mean, uh, law 75 null and void. Mm -hmm. Then two, Supreme Court should declare that under Article 270 and 277 of the 1992 Constitution, only a man policeman can be a Bokunaba. The current chief being a Kwasasma is not qualified to be a Bokunaba. And an injunction, a, perpetual, a perpetual injunction to restrain him from ever being acting as such. This is, they, they made the, the, the request in the Supreme Court. These were their prayers. On the day of the case, the evening of the case, they filed a notice to discontinue. He, he, he suffered from intellectual dishonesty. He said that they, they, they struck the case out for one of prosecution. That is totally false. And you have the document here. I've just showed you one. If you look at it. They filed a notice to discontinue. Look at it. Towards the end. You continue. Yes. Uh, they filed a notice to discontinue. Look at notice of leave to discontinue. Please take notice that the plaintiff hearing hereby seeks leave to wholly discontinue his action against the defendant with liberty to apply. This was 2003. 2003. That is what they applied to discontinue voluntarily. Mm -hmm. And the Supreme Court judge asked them why they voluntarily brought the case and want to discontinue. And their lawyer said that when they read the Boko Navas Council's defense, they have no legs to stand. They threw in the towel and that because they said they have no case. And the judge said, you don't have a case today, and you think that you have a case tomorrow? No, but don't you think that chieftaincy matters must be expeditiously dealt with to avoid conflicts yeah, and but the, the But the fact that the, the judge ruled that you don't have a case, does it mean they threw in the towel? They're two different... They, they, fight, they applied to discontinue their to action. To, to discontinue. And when they asked, why do you want to discontinue, they said they have a weak case. Okay. That's what I mean by they threw in the towel. Okay. And no wonder, a two-line judgment or ruling... The application to discontinue is granted, mm -hmm. but without liberty to apply mm -hmm. under PNDC Law 75 and under Articles 270 and 270 of 992 Constitution. The court is saying that, look, your case is frivolous. Even if you look at the attachment that the defense had put there, your case is frivolous. It has no, it has no basis. And therefore, don't ever come back to court, human priests. Don't ever come back to court anywhere in Ghana and challenge the Kusasi Bokunaba that he doesn't hail from the appropriate family. He's that not a Boko prince. A man prince. The Supreme Court said that in, in 2003. This was recent. Very recent. So when you start talking about 1980 and the rest of them, this is the superior court, the highest court of the land, the decision. Okay. So what is, when he said that there are no children's problem in Boko, yes, there are no children's problem in the sense that the case has been judicially decided. So what they are doing now is a culture of impunity. And as I said, the president of the day has taken an oath to uphold the due process of law. Okay. The Boko Nava is there by virtue of due process of law. So it is the duty of the president of the day, the government of the day, to make sure that he bent from, from the labor of his judgment, the, the fruits of his labor. So they are involved on a frolic of their own. They are involved on a culture of impunity. That is why the conflict is there. There is no chieftaincy conflict. The, the chieftain conflict has been resolved okay. by but, courts. Mm, and I, he should I, accept I mean, the rather than say they struck out the matter. Where he should produce any document saying that the they, 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 they court struck out the matter. And last year, the president met the, uh, the Nigeri, met the Bokuman priests, and they all pledged that given the way the case is, they will go back to court and challenge it. And the president said, fine. The government said, fine. If you go to court, go. But don't engage in violence. Have they gone to court? How many months now? How many years now? Have they not gone to court? Why don't they go back if they think they have a case? So did they go back to court? They have not since 2003 up to now. They have not gone anywhere. They have decided to take the law into their own hands. Okay. And forcefully and, and skin a, a rival chief. That is national security risk. That is why government of the day must make sure that they don't involve in illegality and risks. Okay. Um, Adam Bona, are you there? And if I can quickly make a point, because the last time he spoke and I was speaking, he... He, 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 he interjected. Yeah. Okay, it's he fair. Okay, let me give you one minute, um, um, Dr. Yes, he said I have misquoted him. Initially, I did not say the court struck out. I was not referring to the 2003 case. I was referring to the people who were arrested for performing a funeral. That is what I was referring okay. to. Okay, but you are aware of the 2003 ruling, right? That is what I am coming to. The Supreme Court, and then Mr. Volker knows very well, the Supreme Court does not have the original jurisdiction to decide chieftaincy matters. That is a law. 
If you have a chieftaincy problem, what you do is you start from the traditional council to the regional house of chiefs, then to the national house of chiefs. That was not done. So it means that the case was not a chieftaincy matter. We were only contesting the constitutionality of PNDC Law 75. And what Mr. Clay to Savoka didn't tell you was that PNDC Law 75 was repealed. And that was the reason why we had to apply to discontinue the case. And the court said that, yes, you can discontinue, but don't return on PNDC Law 75 because it is repealed. Okay, so, return, so the court's directive was in relation to the PNDC Law 75. Yes, yes. And then Article 270, Article 270 and Article 277, because they are matters dealing with chieftaincy, which the Supreme Court does not have the original jurisdiction to adjudicate. That is okay. as simple as that. Okay. Nowhere. You can look at all Supreme Court judgments and then all judgments from the National House of Chiefs if they are to decide whether this person is right or not, they will state it clearly. This person is the owner of the skin or this person is the owner of the stool. Nothing like that was adjudicated upon. The ruling was a motion. It was a ruling on a motion that was applied to discontinue and I've explained. PNDC Law 75, and Mr. Avoka should be worried because PNDC Law 75 is what legitimizes the Kusasi chief. And that okay. law has been repealed. It was repealed by Act 516. Let me respond to that one minute. It was repealed by Act 516 in 1996. Otherwise, uh, 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 so uh, that is the point okay. we are making. Okay. And now he talked about Kenel Miller's report. Has he told you the contest? He has not denied the findings that he was indicted on. He he says it he says he says the report has not been published, published one. No and then the, the committee itself was not talking about chieftaincy disputes, it was on let land you, disputes let me tell you, that goes let me beyond tell you, just Mount Crucis and Crusasis. I would entreat you to, to, to read the committee's report, which he cannot deny because it is there. He's only hiding under the terms that it is not published. But the committee actually made these adverse findings, which if they had been implemented, there would have been total peace in Boko. But he was a PNDC stalwart. And I have a letter. The committee even went ahead to issue letters because basically what the committee found out was that Kletusa Boka and Ko, who were the leaders of the Kusasi Youth Association, they had confiscated lands belonging to Manpusi. It was a Manpusi Kusasi thing. And not Moshi, no. Okay. So the committee found that all those lands should be returned to the Mampusis. And then no one should hide under the fact that it was not published or no. No, 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 no. They used the influence they had in okay. PNDC to suppress the findings of that committee. Okay, there was Our a daily graphic report uh, Saturday, May 23, 2023. It says that Man proceed to discontinue an action against the Kusasi. No, please discontinue. As, uh, yeah, to discontinue. Not, not to. Man proceed to discontinue. Man proceeds, and no, the publication is to discontinue an action against the Kusasis, but without uh, any right to bring the matter to court again. Yes. That's the lead. Yes. Which and matter? Ali, the point is which matter? This, that is an issue. This has virtually. It was not a chieftaincy matter. <laughs> it was on PNDC Law 75, mm -hmm. which has been repealed. This is basic. Okay. And then I let can me, assure Ali, you let that me explain a lot the meaning of, of repeal law. Okay. A, a lot of people, a lot of people have understood this fact. That is the point. If it is a chieftaincy problem, it would have started from the lower courts, or the, it's the traditional authorities that handle chieftaincy matters. And okay. What so you your discontinuation, you you are making us understand that your discontinuation is in relation to the PNDC law repealed. Yes, we discovered that it had been repealed. That is okay. the basis of the case. Okay. We are challenging the constitutionality okay. of PNDC. Okay, let me, let me have Michael come in. Michael, oh, can you give I me just a few messages? This, this, uh, I'm sorry. I'll, we'll, 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 we'll take the one minute round because I have my security uh, okay. right. men, right. you know, give us a conclusion before we wrap up. So I'll give you the chance. Right. Michael, um, some messages for me, please. You are going to be censoring uh, the messages that are shared to our feed. So, Abdul Shitu Wumtia first says, May peace prevail in Boku. Uh, Sombro Steven says, Boku can't have parallel chiefs. Now, Hiroshi Magai says, Our brothers, please stop fighting. Peace is everything, peace is wealth. Please let's concentrate more on building Boku and developing the areas. Please let peace prevail in Boku and its environs. Now, 
Uh, Alidu Omar says, good evening, Annie. Uh, the conflict in Baku is in fact needless and unwarranted. Why should innocent people lose their lives just because of simple misunderstanding? So I'm appealing to both factions to lay down their arms and allow sleeping dogs lie. This is from Alidu Omar inside the University of Winneba. And lastly, Ayaba Nicholas says, please we plead with the security to withdraw their services. Then lasting peace will return to the area. It's a passionate appeal. This is from Ayaba Nicholas. Back to you, Annie. Okay. Okay, um, and good fellow, good evening to you. He says that, Annie, I haven't heard from you this year and a good topic watching your life. Good fellow, good evening to you. Thank you for keeping faith with us. Um, have a lot <laughs> here. Um, so let me pick this one. Prince says that my comments, no law in Ghana gave the president the right to say who is chief and who is not. Gazeta chiefs is just a government recognition and it doesn't make you a traditional ruler. Now, now he's acting like a... Oh, okay. No. No. That's one I will not read it. No, we are trying mm. to ensure peace. But let me, let me wrap up. Okay, this one says that Ghana was once ruled by Great Britain before uh, we gained independence. Can the British come back to Ghana? <laughs> we want to be ruled again. This is simple logic. <laughs> <laughs> Let me go to, uh, yeah, okay, quickly, one minute, then I'll, yes. I'll go to Adam Bonam. Yes, um, as I indicated earlier, I said that the man police had resolved to go to court. And I know that if they have a good case, or if they had a good case, uh, a year ago they would have gone to court and not involved or engage in this impunity. Uh, my very good brother and friend, Dr. Issa, is saying that PNDC law, Senator has been repealed. If he, if he is not a lawyer, but if his lawyers were, advi were advised, they are advising them properly, that's why they have not gone to court. The PNDC law has been repealed, but it does not mean that if you acquired rights and privileges under a repeal law, meaning the law in you have lost them, they, they, are, they, are, they are still available to you. Yeah. Yes. So they have. So they, you can that, still build your case. And, so and, that is and why present. they are not going to court. They know that they have no case. When you go to court and it's happy and it is repealed. Okay. It is repealed, but those who benefited or who had acquired rights under PNDC law 75, the law says that those rights have not been extinguished. Yeah. That is, he should consult his I, lawyers. I, I, I that is why they can't go to court. Right. Okay. They I, I, can't go to um, court because I, they have no case. Okay. That's Adam, why Adam, they are involved in the culture of impunity. Mm. Adam, we're wrapping up. Um, let, let me hear from you before, before we can let you go, please. Uh, Annie, yes. I, I think that uh, listening to uh, my brother, Kletus Avoka, and Dr. my colleague, uh, Dr. Moro, uh, I was wishing that you would ask them, so in the interim, what should we do? Mm -hmm. yeah. and you, you didn't ask them. In the interim, all this big English, both of them mm -hmm. are speaking on your network. Mm. In the we, interim, we, which I which I did, which I did, to, but the to, indication I to, get to is mm, which I did, but the indication, indication I get see, is they they still want you to understand the genesis of 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 the conflict before they can even tell the you. you know what? If you if you put my brother lawyer Cletus Avoka and Doctor Emoro, they can argue for the next fifty years. <laughs> okay, and um, they would argue for the next 50 years. Right. But as we speak, mm -hmm. as we speak, I'm sure the area, Kusasis, Mampuses, Ghanaians all over the world in Ghana are watching. I would want to know from them, the two of them, what should we do in the interim to de escalate what is going on? Because then the trigger is just something small. And you know, they are massing up, and today, markets were burned, uh, you know, Narego had some issues, Wale Wale. They haven't spoken about what must be done. But there are three things I think we should be doing. Right. One has to do with the fact that I'm expecting government to appoint a sole minister. And that person should coordinate issues when it comes to Boku and its security and how things must be done. The third thing, sorry, the second thing has to do with the fact that whatever is being done in Boku and this Boku conflict should be intelligence-led and let's be a lot of, a lot of circumspection. You know, let's, let's do things that will not, uh, you know, further make the situation worse. The third thing, if you ask me, will be 
they are already, we, I mean, some processes were triggered. I mean, I was in Boku with some of the security chiefs last year to try and get them to come to a round table and see what can be done. That had, you know, we didn't continue. It had been discontinued, it had been continued. Okay. And so, whilst the two of them are arguing, let's find a middle ground. Right. Because then uh, there is serious distrust when it comes to this Boku issue. Right. And so my worry is that needlessly, uh, people are dying from both sides and the security is being blamed. Everybody is being blamed. And so for me, as far as, far as I'm concerned, I am more interested in the short term, medium term, and then the long, long term. term. But now, 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 let's find a solution to the needless tension that is brewing around this Boko conflict. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Thank you very much. Adib Sani. Mm -hmm. well, well, I I agree with my senior colleague, uh, Dr. Bona, but it doesn't necessarily have to be a minister. Already the government is too big. <laughs> but I mean, we can have um, a body put together to not look directly into the chief tenancy dispute because that would have uh, certain legal implications because, uh, you know, uh, the, we, we are not supposed to miss politics with uh, chieftaincy, but to look at it from the security uh, standpoint, because we have well over 300 unresolved chieftaincy and uh, land disputes all across the country. And one of the biggest mistakes we make is to allow it to brew over a certain period of time, then we ignore it until it blows out in our face. So we need that body put together which can make recommendations to the appropriate uh, bodies, such as the you know, National House of Chiefs, to take action on some of these issues. But most importantly, I think government should continue engaging uh, the two sides. We don't need to take intransigent, stubborn uh, stance. At the point, we need to meet each other halfway. We, we must be willing to jettison some of our demands. I know how difficult this is, uh, but for the sake of peace in the area, we really need to pay, you know, attention to the possibility of us sitting round table, talking progressively, and see how, as partners, we can ensure peace in the right. area. Right. Um, um, uh, Dr. Uh, Morrow, yes, what should I we do now? Can... Yes, government and then civil society need to confront the issue squarely. That uh, statement, people make that the matter has been settled finally. It is not. And the interpretation uh, Mr. Avoka gave about the PNDC law, that is his own interpretation. There are other several interpretations that have been given to. So we need to know that government needs to engage There are other parties. several interpretations that's put on, on uh, repeal law. Exactly, the repeal. Yes, he's saying that yeah, yeah, yeah. A, a law that has been repealed and anybody who has accrued benefits, if you accrue benefits that are illegal, definitely it cannot be legal. <laughs> that is fundamental. Okay. So that is why I'm telling you that it is, that is his, 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 his argument. Okay. You can't accrue benefits that are illegal. Definitely it can't stand. So the point I am making here is that also there are some postures that if we do, it, being, it brings problems. And there's one particular slogan that Mr. Avoka just repeated, that it is colonialism and emancipation from Northeast. Nobody is coming from Northeast, Annie. We Mamprusis in Boko have been there since 1721. And to let you appreciate the meaning of 1721, that was when Ndeura Jaqua founded the Gonja Kingdom. That was when the first Asante state was formed. Okay? That was when the Sokoto Caliphate was formed. Okay. So if you come today and, and make it appear as if people who don't, have been... Don't, don't worry, there's a power. lot of time to go into that when we yes. are able to no, get into no, the medium term and the long term. But then now, I'm summarizing because how, how that do slogan, we calm ten, tempers and yes, the tension? Yes, that slogan, that is a point I'm making. Because if you make that slogan, everybody who doesn't understand the situation thinks that somebody is coming from Northeast. And then let me be open with you. My, my brother Adib asked me a question. So the one Nairi and Skin, is he coming from Nalirgu or is coming from Boko? I had to explain that look, this one, he can trace his great grandparents until the 1721, until 13th century. Okay? Because the colonialists came into Boko in, in 1907. 
Right. But when they came up, Bruce, they already been living there. So if you have a slogan that something is colonialism, it, it doesn't help. Okay. People are fooled into fighting, and it doesn't help at all, because the British came to the Northern Territories in 1896, okay. at which time Mapruzis were already chiefs in Boko. Mapruzis had already eight chiefs. So right. please, those slogans, let's try as much as possible to, avoid to shy away. Right. And if government can constitute eminent chiefs to try as much as possible to resolve the issue, that is fine. Okay. And that can only happen if they understand that there is a problem. Okay. Uh, um, uh, yeah. Lawyer, you have the last word. Yeah, yes, uh, thank you, Andy. Um, let me say that uh, on record, uh, in 1932, uh, the one who is the Bokonaba, or who was the Bokonaba at the time, was also known as the chief of the Kwasasa area. So that he has two titles, chief of Kwasasa area and Bokonaba. Now, Boko, as far as we are concerned, is Kwasasa land. So if you have a man, man, he claims that the man is resident in Boko. Yeah, fine, admitted. He was only esteemed by Nairi in the northeastern region. But he comes from Boko. But they trace their ancestry to Nairi in the northern region. How, Annie, in this modern era, can a man policeman be head chief of Kwasa's area? How is it possible? Even in the out of judicial decisions, how is it possible that uh, uh, an every man is Gamanchi? We, we, we cannot answer that That's question a, that is, now. Yes, we we answer. Can. I'm just trying to let you understand. Okay, what now, we if can I want do. to allude to many of the things that he said, we, we may not close to the well, like I, of the I, I'm so said. sure that but we I'm saying that the way the forward, time and to, yes. the way forward is this, that what is happening in our area is very unfortunate, we're needlessly losing lives and property and the rest of them. Boku was the, 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 the township of the Upper East region, then upper, later on Upper East region. Any officer who was transferred to the region wanted to work in Boku. Now Boku has become a ghost town. It is incumbent upon those of us who come from the area to see how we can coexist, even if we have any challenges. The judicial processes are there. The civil processes are there. Let's adopt them rather than attacking each other and the rest of them. There's no way that there are no chieftaincy or land dispute and the rest of them. This is not the manner in which they behave. And the most critical thing is that Boku is surrounded or um, it shares a border with two neighboring countries, Togo and Burkina Faso. If you take Burkina Faso like that, the border with Boku, I mean the whole of Kusasi area, is uh, being overrun by jihadist extremists, yeah. terrorists, and the rest yeah. of them. And then if this uh, conflict continues to simmer, the likelihood is that we can be surprised by some of these jihadists, terrorists, and the rest of them. Right. That is why it is important that government must hold the bull by the horns. Government must and, have and, the political will. And you, will. as opinion leaders, your people listen to, you can lead government in doing that. Yeah, right? we, have been, we have been urging government to do that. The most important thing is have the political will and commitment to tell somebody the truth. And then, let's say, after that, least let us coexist. Right. I think that that is very important. Truth matters. Yeah. Truth stands. And the government must be bold. Thank you. Um, right. So, uh, and that's Kletos Savoka, uh, a lawyer and a member of parliament for Zibilla Constituency, uh, a Kosasi opinion leader. Dr. Isamoro is a lecturer and also a man Prusi opinion leader. And, and I had these two um, wonderful security analysts uh, who have been friends of the, of the media for some time now, Adam Bona oh. and also Adev Sani, who's also a foreign policy analyst people. It, it starts with communication and opening up the conversation first. And then we can start rolling out plans that we have to ensure peace in one particular area or the other. What has been on the table has been Boko. I thank you for your patience. And, and the people of Boko, I know that you, most of you seem to have my contacts. How you got it, I don't know. <laughs> but <laughs> yes, you can call, send me the messages and the information that I may need in, in, in line of my job. And we we'll also um, try to assist in, uh, in our small corner in, in ensuring that you, you eventually come to a point where we can see and feel peace in the area. It's pains everywhere in the world, I'm always saying, but let's try and secure our area before we can extend a, a helping hand to another, in another country. I thank you for watching. Thank you, Honorable, for coming into the studio. My name is Ani Afonfo for Asset Asati, for Paula Dumotri, and thank you for viewers for being with us. Michael, thank you also for coming through. My technical team as well, good evening and good night. <laughs>